Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm Danielle Amasia. I do product marketing for Hancock Software. And the purpose of today's webinar, it'll be a short webinar, about 30 minutes. And we're gonna go over the new features that we added to Hancock Cloud. Hancock Cloud is the online cloud site that drives Hancock's mobile devices and workflow for energy efficiency and for fuel assistance. So uh, when we look at this feature list, uh, this will be a good video. I am recording the video. So if I am, um, you know, if a half an hour goes by fast, um, I will send out the recording so you can play it back and kind of look at it at your own pace. Uh, and if you have any questions along the way, go ahead and throw it in the question box or you can raise your hand. Uh, I am going to show our mo most of our new features are we're in our new platform. So if you are one of Hancock's customers and you're not using the new platform right now, eventually everybody's going to be moved over to this new platform that I show you. So we can talk about that too. Okay, so the new feature is really this year in 2022. Our mission was twofold. One, we wanted to really optimize the existing features and performance. But on the other side, we wanted to create features where the data can work better for you all in your um, sub grantees and your clients. So this is centered around flexible control. Uh, the first new feature, I'm just going to start on the left and maybe show you a little bit of each new feature. Um, and if you're not using this feature today and you want to use the feature, uh, you can contact your parent organization, your state or your utility. Uh, you know, you can always reply to the emails I send you and I can steer you in the right direction. Um, if you're confused about any of these features, you can just reply to the, the emails too and we can, I can talk to you about them. So the first, uh, one of our first new features was applying online. This is an online application. It's an example of an online application. It should mirror your paper form. Each of your organization's online application might be different than another agency or um, contractor. So if you're running a utility program, you might ask different questions than perhaps this low income example. If you're running a low income program, you might ask income questions, demographic questions, and so on. So one of the first features we built in, in 2022 was this ability for you to offer up a URL for the client. So the client can find this URL. It's usually redirected from your organization's website. And these uh, forms here are configured. And let me just show you how that's configured. So your system administrator has a backend control here, administrative control. And we call this self intake. So you can actually go in here and say, you know, I would like, in addition to family, I would like them to um, show their income levels and perhaps I would like them to upload documentation. So we have this concept this year for self intake template. So here, when I go to this intake template field, um, I'm going to see an option to manage my self intake. And this means, you know, if I want it to show the income grid here, I simply go here and I make it from no to yes. So I make it visible, the income grid. So after I do that, um, the fields automatically get published to the online application. We've always had the feature where you can do this from your, your agency user or your organization user perspective. You can customize and activate fields. Um, but the new feature this year is, is exposing those to the online applicant where they have a self-registration process here. And after the self-registration process, they can log in and create an application. Um, and another new feature is around that application, you can have uh, automatic emails sent out. 
So let's say that person applies online and you want them to get an email when a call or appointment has been scheduled with the agency. Here in the admin section, you have a new feature that you can turn on here and it's called automated emails. And this is just a trigger or way where you decide when the client receives emails. And so far we support this for comments and we've supported for people applying online. Um, we can build out this feature in the future to support it even after they apply online and they receive the benefit. But right now you can see, let's say they apply online and they successfully submit an application. You can go in here and you can customize an, an email to them uh, that they will receive when they submit an application to you. Or you can customize an email to them uh, that they will receive when you, your organization schedules an appointment to qualify the application. Uh, so that's the first feature that is that is uh, new this year, and uh, our clients seem to be enjoying that feature, and it's going well. So if you guys are, if anybody's interested, uh, this does take configuration. Um, you can let me know. The next new feature is, you know, this data. How to get flexible control of this data? and it's a new export data. And the good thing about this feature, you can find it at the top menu. If anything I'm showing that you wanna play with on your staging sites, if you're a current Hancock customer, um, the container screen is where you really decide what shows and not. So this export data screen lets you export um, full sets of data from the system and manipulate as you see fit. So what we do is we pre-fill and we give you some templates. So in this example, I'm showing a, a, an organization that uses Hancock Cloud for uh, weatherization and for utility assistance. So if you need full client information for utility assistance, you would select the fuel assistance template. But if you need it for weatherization, you would select the weatherization template. And how this feature works is you select the template. So this is giving you a full project data and you can build filters around what components of that project data you want to see. So here um, you have this little icon here, we call a field chooser. And let's say for a project you wanna see a you can get really granular. You wanna see the number of adults in each house. You want to see, um, let's say the number of children. So every field that I want to be able to search and see, I just drag over. I wanna be able to see the denied date and reason if there is one. I wanna be able to see all the um, measure data. So you have all these fields that you can drag over there and you can write filters based on this. So this feature has been in use for a little while already. People seem to be enjoying it and being able to really get the most out of it. I'm gonna show an example here where this user creates a report that lists um, houses served by county allocation, which is funding so source, and it runs by invoice date and shows the total cost per county. And you're probably thinking Hancock doesn't have a fixed report for that. So this person made one. Um, and you can open up people's past reports here because they save on this screen. So what they did is they wrote a filter for it where they fill in the invoicing reporting month. And when they fill it in, um, they decided to show the invoice information, the project number, the total cost, and the county. And then they can export um, this data. You just press export again, and it exports into um, CSV or Excel uh, for more manipulation. So this is probably one of the most flexible new features that we have introduced in the second half of this year. And uh, we do have like a how-to guide on how to use this feature too. Um, but it is flexible in the way that 
when you're ready to do a new export, um, you can you can uh, choose the template you want to use. Or if you are constantly doing a similar export over and over again, you can go use an old one or use someone else's and modify it for your own use. The next new feature that we developed this year that is uh, getting underway is contractor invoicing. And a lot of weatherization agencies have asked for this over the last couple of years. Contractor invoicing means we have your parent organization and we have projects or jobs for energy efficiency assigned to sub organizations or sub grantees. But below that, you may use contractors that need to invoice you for the work um, that they did. So this is a new this is a new module here where the contractor, so this contractor is called um, A1 Heating and Cooling. They can go in here and they can invoice the organization or the agency for work. And you can put comments here um, and you can take, you know, keep a history of these comments. And you can see that each measure here, you can track whether each measure has been invoiced or not. So, you know, if I look at this contractor and I can look up the invoice date and I can see which measures have the contractor invoiced the sub organization for. So this is a new feature. It is set up through this screen that we've had here a while. It's called contractor management. And this is a pretty useful new feature too. These are all your subcontractors for your one agency or organization. So this one, you can see um, a larger view here. You know, they have about 50 subcontractors. And if you look at one of these, uh, you can track the contractor information. You can also track co contractor documentation. So if they need, if you need licensing agreements, um, up to date, you know, licensing, state licensing, things like that. This is a good screen where you can manage a contractor. And if you had a statewide contractor or a utility-wide contractor, for example, A&W Heating and Air is, uh, let's say it's across the state, then the other, this is a newer feature, each organization can use that same one record to have the licensing. So you wouldn't have to like, um upload licensing for more than one if you are if, if it was already in there so that's a new feature that's just getting kicked off um this last quarter that's contractor management and then the ability to actually invoice um send invoices to your organization that you sub for and that's through the contractor invoicing screen uh, the next little feature that is recent that you all may have started to notice is uh, we have a new release notes. So when you log in and you're wondering what changed in Hancock, you can now just go down to the top, the bottom left. There will be a bubble there if you haven't clicked it before. And you can just see the release notes and you can read what changed in your system since the last update. Um, we also have a message banner up here if any states want to put a message for all the users to see. This feature is controlled through the bulletin board. So um, on the admin, there's a bulletin board here that you can turn on and you would be able to control the release notes and the ticker message at the top. Okay. There is a question, when is contractor invoicing going to be released? Um, Ryan, I'm not sh sure what, let me know what state you're from. I don't know, what we've been doing is we've been testing it. I think um, if you're from Colorado, the idea is to release it there first. Um, but it is, I think it's. I think it's ready. So we can check on that after the, The webinar um and then somebody has their hand raised okay julie i'm gonna unmute you because your hand's raised hi julie 
Oh, hi. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. All right, you can. You want to mute yourself? You can. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Accidental hand raise. That's okay. Okay. Anyway, like for example, in Julie's state, um, her her state hasn't moved over to this new platform yet, but it's still a good idea. You know, you can get an idea of what's coming. Hopefully, it's things you're hoping you have right now. We've tried to look ahead in this new prep platform and make features um, that you hope for. The, not, the other thing that's new this year is smart reports. So we have always gotten the feedback um, in Hancock. When you go to this reporting tab, uh, you see these reports and you can't change them, right? It's like this report, what you see is what you get. This is what you search. The smart report feature over here lets you change those reports. So you can go here, let's say, um, you know, let's say a budget report. You can go here or a client report and you can modify it. You can say, I want to run this report by county. I want to run this, I want to drill in by zip code. So you put the start and end date and then you can you know, go in and further drill down into the reports. So that's a good report. That's a good tool for you if you're like, like the existing reports over here, but you wish that they did more for you, that you could do more with them. You could drill down into them further or add fields to them. Then you wanna check out the smart report feature. And um, you can see we're getting a little more organized with how we, uh, how we organize these reports. So you'll see fuel assistance and weatherization. Um, so which ones are geared towards energy efficiency and which ones are geared towards utility bill assistance. Um, so we have a lot of new features. The other new feature this year that uh, not all of our current customers are using, it's been, we have a couple states using it already. Um, and it's really important in fuel assistance, but you might want to use it for weatherization anyway, is to verify your address, the client's address with a third party API. So do you know like when you order, you do online shopping and it suggests your actual address and you click that address, that feel, that feature is in our system now. So when you're, when you open an application, you can turn on a button here called verify address. Now I'm showing you um, fake data, right? Not real data, so it's not gonna pass. So as you, this is a good example. So if you verify address here, you see a status that says it's unverified. When I select it, this status over here is gonna fail. So what it's doing right now when I select it is it's reaching out to a third party address verification called Smarty Street and it's seeing if this address is a real address, and it's not. Um, if it's close to a real address, it will suggest addresses. In this way, um, there's no close address. So because of that, you can see here that the address has failed. So this is a way, especially in utility bill assistance, where mail is payments are going out to actual customers, it's very useful. And uh, you can immediately start using this. You just turn it on through the admin intake template right here. Um, and you select, do you want to turn it on for LIHEAP? Do you want to turn it on for weatherization? And if you just search address here, you can go in and um, you can turn on the address status and the button verify address through container. Okay, um, the next new feature that's kind of hidden um, that is a nice to have is the ability to see like what are your priority points doing? What is that number? What's behind that number? Right now, um, agencies, users, they've kind of memorized their state's priority points. So they look at the fields in Hancock and they add them up to themselves. Uh, but in this case, uh, you have this tool tip that you can turn on for priority points and it'll just show you uh, why or, or how it's it's calculating. So here you can turn on the tool tip here, it's a question mark. Looks like I have to turn it on. 
it's a question mark and it'll show you how that 50 is calculating. So that's a useful feature if you're if you want to help your your sub organizations understand what's going on in priority points. Next, data import. Um, there's a lot of desire to just dump data into the system. A common example is perhaps you run an energy efficiency program and you want to import um, potential weatherization. So what we have here is this is a history of data dumps into the system. So we have a format and you simply select import and choose the CSV file and you run the import. And then you see a table whether that import failed or passed. So if you have a fail, it shows you exactly why Diane Higg, this one did not come in and it's because the street um, was labeled the wrong way. So that's a new data import feature this year. Um, and then before I get to the Mint, I, let's let's look here for this Mint step-by-step -step guided audit. Uh, I'm gonna go, so Mint, everybody always gets confused about this. Everybody knows Hancock for heat. Heat is uh, approved by the Department of Energy for full energy modeling. Um, our newer app is actually called Mint. And what we're doing right now is we're building that heat, that Department of Energy energy model into Mint. And uh, that's, you know, that's what we're doing now. That should be done, um, you know, very soon, like the end of this month. Um, this is another feature that people love that they don't know about. In the new app, you can build a step-by-step -step guided audit yourself. So you guys can envision this example. I'm an auditor. Um, I take anything, any tablet. I'm not connected to internet. And then I see the step-by-step -step process. So I have to you know, I have to press start on my audit. That's my first <laughs> thing. I have to get the customer to sign a um, release form. You know, and you can view this stuff too. I have to then get them to sign other releases. And then I have to do a health and safety check. So I go here and when I do the health and safety check, I have these fields and I must fill out these fields. And it's just a step-by-step -step guide that shows an auditor exactly what your state or your utility, what you want that auditor to do. So then you go back to the step-by-step -step guided audit and you get into the heart of the um, audit here. So this one I don't, ha I have in progress here. You know, so I've done everything in green as an auditor and I haven't done everything in white. And you just press play you know, so the next step is the insulation. So I have to go in and I have to fill out this insulation, um, the wall insulation. So when you're done that, then you're allowed to go to the next step here, which would be windows. And you press play and you just have to fill out all this information. So you have to fill out the existing. Um, you know, so you add the existing and you have to say, where are the existing windows located with framing type and so on. So that is our step-by-step -step guided audit. Um, our weatherization states are interested in this because DOE allows for a priority audit again. And then our utilities li love this feature because you can uh, just send this out with your workforce and it's real easy. The calculations and everything, they just go by your steps, whatever you're your program shows. Okay, so that is the rundown for 2022 new features. Um, when we look ahead to 2023, right now we're really focusing on performance. We have all these new features. We need everything to work together really efficiently for you. So we're listening to you all. We're focusing on enhancing the performance of the software um, and 
energy modeling. So that is really what we're looking for to be done um, in Q1 of next year. And in Q1 of next year, we'll start to get DOE to review that new energy model in Mint. Okay. Um, so we have a couple questions. Sheila is an existing customer and she said, that is awesome. Um, maybe you're talking about the guided audit. I don't didn't see when you wrote that question, but thank you. And like Sheila, like you know, you're not using this app right now, but in the future, your state is working to move to the app. We just gotta get it you know, DOE approved first and get all the data moved over. Um, the other question is, is the webinar gonna be posted for future reference? Yes, so uh, latest by tomorrow, I send out a recording and you can just pause and play this at your speed. Okay, everybody, um, thanks for attending. I don't wanna take up too much of your time, so we can end here. Um, I will send out the recording if you signed up for this webinar, even if you didn't attend, and then you can forward it to whomever you'd like. Have a great holiday, because uh, we don't have any other webinars for the rest of the season, but next year we'll pick back up again. Thank you all. Goodbye.